Colby's World. 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 Like that. Today we're going to talk about a very important skill for physics of the universe. In case you haven't noticed by now, we will be using um, a good amount of math, basic math, but still math in our class all year long. And this skill, the guess method, is something you're going to want to use for many of our quizzes and tests, many of them. So. Just because you, you might figure out ways of remembering your way through some of the time speed distance problems right now doesn't mean it's going to help you later because you, you need to know how to use the guess method. So here we go. Guess method is an acronym. G-U-E-S-S. -S. It stands for Givens, Unknown, Equation, Substitute, and Solution. Now, I know it's five things here, that, you, but you need to know them. You need to remember them, remember the order, G-U-E-S-S, -S, and know what each of these means so that you can use them for almost all of your problem solving this entire year in your Physics of the Universe class. The givens are almost always, they're numbers. They're the numbers in the problem. They're numbers I give, that are given to you in the problem. You write them down and label them. Then the unknown. Well, the unknown is what you don't know, but it's usually it's the question. Okay, this is the thing that they're that the question's asking you for. Place a question mark next to the variable that you're solving for. You're gonna identify the variable with a question mark. So here we're looking for S for speed. Okay, that's the G and the U. Now the E is for equation, which makes a lot of sense. You're solving this you literally just copy it from the reference sheet, which is the yellow sheet that we give you in all of your quizzes and tests. You just write it down, copy it. Don't try to memorize it. Just write it right off the equation sheet. That way you don't make any mistakes. Substitute. Now you take the equation and you substitute the givens. You just go through all of the, let, the variables here and you put in the numbers that you already have been given. You stick them right in the equation and rewrite it, exactly rewrite it, but with the numbers in there. And then finally, you do the solution. Um, this is where you solve for the actual final number and you box your answer and put your units at the end of the answer. Um, in this case, you just put 30 divided by two equals 15 and it's meters per second you box the answer. So I know there's a lot here. This is, this is why we kind of come up with an acronym, GUESS. So you can go through an order and think of what each step, one step at a time, G-U-E-S-S. -S. First, let's focus on the G and the U. These are the first two steps. And givens and unknown. These are actually not, not difficult to remember because it's basically what is in the problem up here. Just look at the problem and see what the problem gave you and what it's asking you. So when I read problems like this, and what you should start doing is start seeing with your eyes, what like as if you had a highlighter, just look for the number, any numbers, and highlight it with their units. Here's 2.5 hours. And I'm looking for more numbers I go across and I see 140 miles. Those right there are clues that those are both givens, numbers with units next to them. Then the next thing you want to look for is you want to look for the question. See if you can identify what it's asking for. How fast does the car travel? How fast? That would be the question. Okay. Now what you almost want to literally do is take these and put them like take the 2.5 hours and put it here because it's a given. Take the 140 miles and put it right here because it's another given. Their numbers are given to you. And then the how fast is the question. So you want to take that and put it right here where the unknown is. Now you can't leave them like this because this, this is just reading from the, from, the, from the problem. What you have to do now is you have to turn them into variables and identify them as parts of the equation that we're going to be solving, putting in or solving for. In order to, to do that, it's really 
helpful and useful that you have to know your units. You have to know what you're measuring things in. So for time, speed, distance problems, we're going to be measuring time, speed, and distance. And in science, you really have to know what you're measuring in because it can make all the difference in the world. You know, you how far do you travel? You're traveling three inches or you're traveling 30 miles. It's a big difference, right? So you have to know your basic dis time, distance, speed units on these. So um, distance, for example, there's some different examples of distance. Meters is one of the ones we use a lot in, in my class. Meters, or sometimes we write as a little M for meters. Meters is the meter stick distance. And then there's miles. Miles is something we use a lot in, in common everyday use for driving your car, for example. Sometimes we write miles as MI. Um, and then there's centimeters we might use for small amounts of meters, tiny distances of centimeters um, is something something like inches. And then kilometers will be um, the metric system for miles. So those are distances. Those are the four most common meters, miles, centimeters, and kilometers. Those are the four most common ones that you really have to become familiar with. Now time, time is easy, I hope. Um, anything measured time, the two most common ones we use, of course, are seconds and hours. Um, so anytime you see hours or HR for hours or S for seconds, you should recognize this as time. Okay, now speed. Speed, um, for some reason, some students have a problem remembering or knowing that units for speed, um, but you have some help. You have the formula sheet. It says right there, S equals D over T. It's the equation. It tells you right there, almost like a recipe. S equals distance over time. Speed is distance over time. It's almost like the units are right there for you. It's a fraction. You just take speed. You just take any of these distance units and any of these time units and you make a fraction and you got a speed unit. Let's see if I can put together some examples. One of the most common ones we use a lot is meters, right, over seconds. Meters and seconds. You see that a lot, meters and seconds. And look, it's a fraction, just like the equation shows you. Speed is distance over time, meters over seconds. Um, you don't even have to remember speed. It's right there on your formula sheet. It tells you it's distance divided by time. So speed is going to make up a different use. Another one would be miles per hour, right? Anytime you have this fraction with distance over time, you have some sort of speed unit. So these are your main units. You're going to need to know at least these to get through the class. Okay, so back to our givens and our unknowns. Again, you have the, the equation sheet has S equals speed, D equals distance, and T equals time. So all you have to do is take these three things and match them with these three letters. Okay, like, so again, you have to know your units. And I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, all right, hours. That's usually the easiest one, 2.5 hours. That's going to be time. So I'm going to put right here, T equals 2.5 hours and I'm done with that one okay now I got miles well miles is gonna be you know distance and so it's gonna be the D D equals 140 miles and I'm done with that one and now I'm down to my question it says how fast well how fast and the only thing left is s for speed and speed is how fast so that makes sense so I'm gonna put s equals I'm gonna put question mark because that's the question and so that's the givens and the unknowns, the numbers and the question. So we got G and U, let's move on to the E. The next two steps of guess, the E and the S, go together, E equation and substitution. So now that you got your givens and your unknown, the next two parts are all about the equation. So you just go back to your formula sheet again, and the next step is these two steps are actually really simple. You just take the equation and you copy it. Just copy it exactly as you see it from the yellow paper, from the formula sheet. Um, I have students who try to memorize it and they flip these two around backwards or they just try to move the letters around. Just copy it exactly as you see it on the formula sheet. That way you won't make any mistakes. Okay. 
The next step then is substitute. Substitute, does you know what the word substitute? When you have a substitute teacher, substitute means replace the letters that are normally there with something else. What are you gonna replace them with? You're gonna replace them with these over here, the givens and the unknowns. All right, so if we notice, what we can see, we have T is 2.5, so that's gonna go there where the T is. And then we have D is 140, that's gonna go right there where the D is. And then the S, the S is the unknown, so that stays S, the unknown. So let's rewrite that in our substitute by just plugging in those where they go. So S is the question, so we leave it an S. The D is 140 miles. And the T goes in the bottom, you see it goes in the bottom, is 2.5 hours. So that's the equation and the substitute. That step, those steps are very simple. Now we have one last step. The last step is the solution. Now this could be either pretty easy or a little more difficult depending on what you have right here after you substitute. Now, luckily I see to have S all by itself on the left, so it's um, alone, it's already solved for. All you have to do is put 140 divided by 2.5 in your calculator and you get the answer. 56. So we see that speed equals 56 miles per hour. So your final, your answer, your solution has to have three parts. You should always have the unknown written. You should always have the correct units, and you can get the units from over here. You just got to put them together in the right way to, to make speed in this case. And then you have to have the actual correct numerical answer. So let's put the entire thing guessed back together on one slide and put it in a way that you can, that'll help you remember it, okay? Um, so the, the first two, givens and unknown, the G and the U, those always come right from the problem itself. So the givens are the numbers I, that were given to you in the problem with their units, and the unknown is the question that was given to you. So both of these, the givens and unknown, come right from the problem. The equation, which is the middle one, come, equation comes from the equation sheet. You just got to figure out, after you look at what's given to you and what's asking for, you look on your equation sheet and you figure out what the equation is and literally just copy it down exactly off the, uh, the equation sheet. So that step, once you figure out what equation you're using, you just copy it down. That's it. All right, now substitute is where you put everything above together. You just take the numbers that were given and substitute them into the letters in the equation and the unknown you leave the letter like it is. And then finally the solution is where you write down the solution that you figured out. Make sure you put the number you put and you put the units. You box your answer. There you go. Guess. So let's try it quickly right here. Um, I'm looking at my problem. If it takes eight seconds to run a distance of 22 meters, how fast, how fast are you running? So I'm looking at eight seconds. Eight seconds is a given. And that's going to be my time. Time equals eight seconds. And I have 22 meters, and that would probably be distance. Distance equals 22 meters. Um, and then the question is how fast? So that's probably, I already have um, time and distance, so it's probably going to be di speed, and speed is how fast. So the question is how fast? Then the equation. Well, I know the equation is one I've been using. It's going to be the time speed distance equation. I'm copying it right from here. And then I substitute these numbers into those letters in the correct spot. Well, the S is what we're solving for. I'll leave that. And then the distance is 22 meters. 
and the time is eight seconds. Okay, and now I'm seeing it. Set, um, speed is all by itself on the left, so that means I got I was off, I solved for it. It's just now it's 22 divided by eight, and I put that in my calculator, and I get 2.75. So speed equals 2.75. Now my units, I'm looking up here. I got seconds and minutes, and so it's in speed. I know speed is going to have a fraction, so it'll be seconds and minutes, and then not minutes, seconds and meters. Yeah. We're talking about meters, right? Yeah, meters and seconds. So it's distance over time, meters per second. So the solution, speed is 2.75 meters per second. Let's try one more problem. Um, so how far does a turkey running at 14 meters per second reach in three seconds? So the first step is and guess is G for givens, and we got to write down um, what we're given. And here I see I have three seconds, so that's going to be time. Uh, time is usually an easy one, three seconds is time. And I have 14 meters per second. Um, I got time already. And I have meters per second. Well, meters per second is not distance because it's got seconds in it, and it's a fraction like this. The, the equation speed is. Distance over time, so it's going to be the fraction is going to be the speed. So the 14, okay, so speed equals 14 meters per second, right? Meters per second. And it looks like, it looks like the equation for speed, meters per second. So what's it asking for then? The problem is asking for how far. Okay, how far? Well, this one's different now. How far is distance? Is the distance is asking how far, okay. The next step, what's the next step? It is to equate. So there's the rest of guess. There's one more S left, but there's guess. E for equation. Now we just take this equation right here and copy it. So copy the equation right off the yellow paper. Okay, substitute. Now we just take all these numbers and plug them in where they go. So we're solving. Wait, don't, I don't want to put S there because we're solving for D. So I got to put instead of S, I have to put 14. Because that's S is 14. So I have to put 14 instead of S. And then on top, I have a D, and D is the unknown. So I leave it as a D. And then the bottom, the bottom, I can see the bottom goes T. T is 3. So that goes in the bottom. All right. So that's what I got when I saw. All right, now the solution is a little trickier because D is not by itself. It's not alone, so I have to get rid of the three. The three is in the way, so I'm dividing by three right now. So the opposite of divide by three is multiply by three. So I have to multiply this by three. That's gonna be able to reduce, but since I did this, multiplied this side by three, I also have to multiply that side by three. Okay, and now I can reduce. These go away. They're reduced to one. So now I got D all by itself, and I got my answer now. So I got the solution, D equals, and it's 3 times 14. And I put that in my calculator, and I get 42. And I got to check my units, distance. So we're using seconds and meters per second. Meters per seconds and seconds, but distance. So distance is going to be measured not with time, but with meters. So meters will do it. 42 meters.